Many people may dream of becoming an astronaut, but this is going to help them make it a reality. For $200,000, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 will take you into near space. At the moment, they're working on a new spaceport in New Mexico, where this beast, and with four passengers and two pilots, will launch from underneath White Knight 2 mothership. Once it reaches 50 to 60,000 feet, it will drop, ignite a rocket motor, and take you to the edge of space. Early today, I spoke to Sir Richard Branson, the chairman of Virgin Galactic, to outline how testing is going and what the experience will be like for people. Um, the testing is going extremely well with Spaceship Two, um, and uh, next year we'll finally be going into space. Um, I'll be taking uh, Holly and Sam, my children, uh, and that will be the start of a whole a whole new era of space travel. So. Um, we're, we're in the final throes of, t of testing now. And what will it be like for uh, passengers? Um, people who fly into space on Virgin Galactic will have the ride of a lifetime. Uh, they'll become astronauts. Uh, they will be able to marvel at uh, this beautiful Earth that we live on. Um, and they'll be able to do something that only 500 people have done in the history of space travel. So, uh, it's it's um, going to be a very, very, very exciting time ahead. And you announced Launcher One today. What is that? Uh, Launcher One uh, is the second sort of development of the Virgin Galactic program, and that is to put satellites into space at a fraction of the price that people have been able to do so in the past. So, whereas normally it would cost about 40, 30, 40 million dollars to put a, a satellite into space, we're going to be able to do it for under 10 million dollars. So, um, uh, so that will open up, I think, a whole, a whole new era of uh, satellite companies uh, being able to help people with uh, you know weather with telecommunications with mobile phones uh, with checking the Earth's atmosphere uh, so uh, I, th I think quite a historic day today and finally how are plans going for the Abu Dhabi spaceport um, we are uh, working on the plans for the Abu Dhabi spaceport um, they're coming together really well um, we, we've got to get all the final sort of permissions ticked from, uh, from the American authorities since we're, we're building our spaceship in America, but I'm sure that will happen. Um, and Abu, Abu Dhabi and in particular Arbor have been fantastically helpful in uh, getting the program this far. Um, in fact, without their support, I don't think we'd be doing this press conference today. So, uh, enormously grateful. Sir Richard Branson, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. It's fantastic. In parallel, we've doubled the space zone, so the combination of Virgin Galactic White Knight 2 and the doubling of the space uh, zone in the, the main halls in Farnborough is making me feel like a child again. I'm really enthusiastic about space. Uh, we have expanded the business and, of course, it's a delight to invite pioneers and entrepreneurs such as Sir Richard Branson to announce new businesses at this, the show, the international show for new business development. So it is, it is a great delight for me. But our team has worked very, very hard over the last four years to expand uh, the initiatives in space. Not only has Sir Richard uh, and the Virgin Galactic team taken the opportunity from, from this year, but we have uh, found that the European agencies for space, the European companies and the Russians have been very significant uh, investors in Farnborough this year. And uh, so Roscosmos, uh, the uh, EADS and its space businesses, Finn Mechanic and its space business, they've all expanded their position at Farnborough in 2012. The space industry presence at this year's Farnborough Air Show was the best ever. This year's space zone in Hall 3 was double the size of 2010's with 2,000 square metres of floor space and a dedicated theatre with seating for 160 people. And there's plenty of opportunity to get involved in activities including live demonstrations, conferences and seminars with the pavilion open to the public over the weekend. There were displays from the European Space Agency, Italy's ASI, Russia's Roscosmos, the UK Space Agency and EADS Astrum. The Space Zone showcased the importance of space systems and applications in facing global challenges and how it provides decision makers with tools to respond to critical challenges such as climate change and global security. David Willits, UK Space Minister, speaking at Tuesday's conference, said that Great Britain's space industry had a lot to be proud of. He said the industry generated £9 billion in revenue in 2010-2011 
and provided 29,000 jobs. Growth in the sector was up 7.5% last year, and the first 12 months of the UK Space Agency's existence had gone well. He added that the International Space Innovation Centre at Harwell had also been a great success, bringing in £70 million of investment across 50 new projects. But he also said that the UK shouldn't be complacent. He said that the UK risked being left behind on reusable space plane technology and space tourism. And to this end, he said that the government will now place more emphasis on a framework to encourage its new enterprise and the fledgling space tourism industry. Jean-Jacques Dordain, Director General of the European Space Agency, congratulated the UK on its progress, saying that ESA had learned a lot from the UK. He also said that it's the right time for the UK and ESA to take a new direction, which is a reference to November's ESA Ministerial Conference in Italy that will lay down the agency's direction for the next five years. The conference also heard a briefing through an interpreter from Vladimir Popovkin, head of Russia's Roscosmos, who was visiting Farnborough for the first time.